In the race for the White House, Donald Trump finally makes his immigration speech. Meantime, Hillary Clinton is still getting heat for her email scandal. Earlier this week, Trump confirmed that he would indeed build the wall and vowed Mexico would pay for it. This after a trip to Mexico to meet with the country's president. Trump then headed to Detroit and gave a speech at a church saying the black faith community has been a backbone of America's strengths. He also stressed he would ensure equal rights for all races during his presidency. Meantime, newly released FBI documents show Hillary Clinton couldn't recall specific details or events when she was questioned about her email scandal. This, as Clint Clinton rather, leads in the polls over Trump in nearly every hot topic concerning Americans. The race for the White House is our topic this half hour, and we want to hear from you on our Fox 26 Facebook page. You can also send a tweet, hashtag at Fox 26 Roundup. Joining us live in the newsroom is our panel, <coughs> led by our senior legal analyst Chris Tritico, Democratic media consultant Mustafa Tamiz, and Republican strategist and public policy analyst Jackie Bally. Good morning again. Good morning. So Trump is continuing to make up ground in the polls. Well, he, he certainly ticked up in the last week, and that's that. That's that can be uh, viewed as as he's been a little bit more disciplined candidate in the last week. Went to Mexico, came back, but but he gave this very caustic speech. In, in Arizona cost him two of his uh, advisory board, Hispanic advisory board members. It can be also that Hillary Clinton had a pretty bad week. And so we don't know yet where, where the tick up came for Donald Trump. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, it's been an up and down. As I've said, this is a race to the top of the bottom of the polls, uh, Jackie Pally, and we're going to see where it goes. Uh, Donald Trump was a little bit more disciplined candidate, but that, that speech in Arizona, while you have praised it, cost him two members of his advisory board, and a lot of people are saying that that speech didn't do any good when you, when you compare it with what he did in Mexico. What I said was, specifically from a policy standpoint, it was very specific and one of the best policy points we've seen from a presidential candidate in a long time. Uh, it was very specific. He had a lot of detail, which is something you don't see. That's specifically what I said. As far as if people liked it or not, we're seeing the ramifications of that. He has continued to close the gap. Uh, a lot of his measures and policies that are initiatives that he uh, released in his policy paper are actually laws that are currently in place and he says he wants to make sure that they are enacted or implemented. So he did not really and bring anything new uh, to the table. These are existing laws and policies, and he said that they're not being enforced. He wants to make sure they, they enforce him. Uh, the fact that he is now uh, uh, visiting with a black church, I think that's very good because before they used to say Republicans did not pay attention to black people, uh, and now you're hearing liberals attack him for paying attention to black people. So no matter what he does, they're going to attack him. Does, and this is what's been said about this. Does going to one black church in a year of running for president, does that make you uh, uh, the candidate for the African-American community? Well, look, I, I'm glad that he went. Uh, I think that not only went, he, he said he's listening, which is the first time we've heard in the campaign that he's listening uh, at all. Um, there was a uh, 50 uh, members of national security team, Republicans and Democrats, <coughs> mostly Republicans, wrote a letter saying that Donald Trump is ill-prepared to handle national security issues. The only thing he's less prepared to handle than national security is domestic policy. So for the fact that he's actually trying to grapple with it, it is good. Is it enough? Absolutely not. I mean, it took him this long to get here, and it took us this long to hear that he's actually trying to listen to somebody when there's only less than 70 days left right. for the election. Let me go to Sally. She's monitoring our social media. Okay, we're going to check in with both viewers and the candidates themselves. We're going to start with a tweet uh, from Donald Trump one of his most recent ones. He says, great visit to Detroit Church, fantastic reception, and all CNN talks about is a small protest outside, inside a large and wonderful crowd. He continues his attacks on the media and how he's portrayed. Uh, at C3 Forever says, I'm an African American and I'm voting for Donald Trump, never Hillary. Uh, ben says, Hillary Clinton's memory must be really bad if she burned through 13 blackberries and can't remember where she set them down. <laughs> and then Hillary Clinton says Donald Trump's plan on immigration has been clear all along. Demonize immigrants, build a wall, deport millions. Her tweets mostly involved his immigration and his trip to Mexico this week. And she adds, as a candidate, Trump has already embarrassed us on the world stage. Imagine the damage he'd do as president. Yeah. Well, and let's turn to Hillary Clinton right now because, and, and, and I don't want to address the 
tweets that much because we're going to run out of time. Okay. Hillary Clinton had a pretty bad week. We found more emails. Uh, the Clinton Foundation came came back up again, and in the FBI released its notes. But right. I didn't see anything really surprising in the notes as opposed to the the the, the FBI director's press conference. The overall problem Hillary Clinton has is that people do not trust her. Her distrust factor percentage is higher than Donald Trump's. Uh, and Americans continue to say we don't trust her. These emails continue to show us that they're hiding things. The pay for play th that has been escalated to a, the pay for play that's been ex escalated to a level we've never seen before. She has been up for pay with anyone from a foreign nation for years and that will continue. Isn't her problem that she didn't get ahead of this two years ago? Look, I, she's been in public eye for 25 years, and her biggest problem is that there's paid operations to come make her look bad and to create these type of manufacturers outrages, and that's her problem. Um, she's done every time she's been in office, whether first lady, whether the senator for the United States. All right, we got to leave York, it right there. I'm she's sorry. She's always been given hard marks. All right, we'll be back next week wrapping up the hottest stories of the week. Enjoy your Labor Day. Thanks.